Welcome to the second of our three videos of worship for the 3rd of July 2022. In this video, Elaine is going to read us our Bible reading and then we're going to think a little about it. Today's reading is taken from Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 to 19. Jesus heals 10 men with leprosy. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I guess you'll probably agree with me that this Bible passage uh, is really about the question of saying thank you to God for the good things which he has done in our lives. And it's not really particularly about the mechanics uh, of how these ten people with leprosy uh, were healed. But nevertheless, I think I need to start uh, by asking some basic questions about that because there has been a widespread feeling in our generation uh, that these kinds of stories are, are really mythological. That's to say that they convey a spiritual truth uh, but not a historical truth and the things that they report didn't really happen. Is that right? Well, uh, in the last century, really quite a long time ago, a theologian called Bultmann, Rudolf Bultmann, uh, embarked on a program of what was called demythologization with a number of other theologians uh, in that time. The idea was to try and get behind the mythological things which had been attributed to Jesus and focus uh, on the essential uh, Jesus, who was the historical figure who lay behind them. Uh, in order to try and make the Christian faith more accessible to those who were sceptical about the whole thing about miracles. And the programme was intended to show that there was somebody called Jesus who you could really trust behind all those things. But actually what it showed is that you couldn't disentangle uh, the miraculous from the gospel without the gospel falling to bits. Uh, if you took out uh, all the things about Jesus' healing ministry and all the miracles that he did uh, and the way that he was remembered uh, as undoubtedly one who performed miracles and brought the goodness of God into people's lives in a physical manner, then unfortunately the, drop, the gospel dropped to bits and there was no satisfactory explanation for why anyone would ever have wanted to follow Jesus at all. Uh, the programme was a failure in the sense of trying to bring the Christian faith uh, to uh, the attention of the people who were sceptical about miracles. But on the other hand, it was a big success about establishing the veracity of the Bible's accounts. Uh, roughly speaking, Bultmann proved uh, that you have to take uh, the healing element of the gospel seriously. Uh, in this particular uh, Bible story, you'll probably notice that the translation says that leprosy may not actually have been the disease that we now call leprosy. It may have been some other skin condition. But what's undoubtedly the case uh, is that Jesus uh, was remembered in all generations right to the beginning uh, as being someone who had the power to heal these kinds of things and bring people into wholeness of life. But the mechanics of how he did it uh, are really very odd, aren't they? Uh, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were healed. Uh, immediately as they went, or while they were some distance along the journey? Well, it implies some distance along the journey, doesn't it? Uh, in other words, Jesus actually wasn't there when they got healed. Uh, one of them turned back in thanksgiving. 
and the others proceeded on and Jesus commends the one who turned back uh, and says uh, that he and presumably he alone has been made whole at the end of the passage it says your faith has made you whole uh, there is physical healing but there's also healing on the inside of a person as well uh, the other nine who had been cleansed of their leprosy had been restored to normal life uh, but the tenth uh, was cleansed of his leprosy and also there was something inside him which was corrected as well uh, why was it uh, that the other nine didn't come back well i suppose a number of reasons occur to me uh, it may have been uh, that they wanted to interpret jesus literally and the first thing they had to do was to go and show themselves to the priest uh, rather than return and say thank you to God uh, through Jesus. It may have been uh, that some of them were not convinced that they were healed uh, and needed to go to the priest first to make quite sure of the fact uh, before uh, expressing thanks. Uh, let reserve judgment. It may be that some of them thought the healing might be temporary uh, or maybe uh, they would catch something worse. It may be that some of them uh, entertained resentment against God in their hearts because after all God was the one who had allowed them to catch such a terrible thing to start with. It may be uh, that some thought it was just a coincidence and they would have got better anyway. It may be uh, that some were suddenly struck by the fact that if they were healed then they'd now have to earn their livings instead of beg their way through life. Uh, all these kinds of things uh, might have turned them against the idea of going back to say thank you. But this one particular one, uh, he realised the good things which God had done in his life and he turned back and gave thanks to God. In our lives, uh, I think most of us will have experienced crises followed by resolution of them. Uh, we will have had some difficult situation in our lives, something that we feared would develop into something terrible. And perhaps we have uttered a prayer inside ourselves, even the most atheistic of us, uh, asking God to help. There is no prayer so sincere as that which flows from the fact that we have suddenly got stuck and we need some real help in our lives. And we may have received some answer, and then those questions will come in. Uh, is it uh, that it would have happened anyway? Uh, is it going to be a permanent answer or is the whole situation going to come unstuck in the future? And those kinds of things can help us, uh, sorry, can prevent us from saying thank you and can be hindrances in our heart for gratitude. But what Jesus is saying uh, is that the power of God is real in our lives. And despite the fact that we might not understand how, we can understand that God has done something good for us. And then what's our reaction? Uh, do we want to give to him money? Uh, do we want to pledge ourselves to greater activity? Do we want uh, to pledge time spent in his worship uh, or effort spent in the alleviation of others' poverty? Do we want to uh, get involved in helping with the local food bank or in giving a greater proportion of our income to the welfare of those in need? But when people came to Jesus and said to him, what is it that God would have us be doing? Uh, he replied in John's Gospel, the work of God that God wants you to be doing is this, to believe in the one whom he has sent. And this one man uh, of the ten came back and fell at Jesus' feet and offered praise and thanks to God through Jesus. He acknowledged that Jesus was the way in which God helps us and he gave gratitude to God. And he alone was touched by God's spirit inside and brought to a deeper healing than the others. The Bible passage makes me wonder about my own thankfulness. When God has done something good in my life, do I entertain doubts about whether it would have happened anyway? 
do I wonder uh, what the future holds and therefore shut my heart up against gratitude? Or do I turn back to him in wonder and love and praise and give to him the thankfulness that he richly deserves? And this is the attitude that Jesus says uh, will result not only in the permanence of my own healing, but also in the deeper healing that comes in the human heart. The healing which knows the reality of God and gives supremeness and gives serenity and confidence in the future. Uh, let's aspire to be like that Samaritan, turning back to God and giving thanks and praise for the good things that we have received. How is it that Jesus said at the end of the reading, your faith has made you whole? Uh, I suppose faith is the act of trust. Uh, it is the confidence that God will do what he said and therefore that the healing will stick. And I suppose faith is what the man was expressing when he turned back to Jesus in thanksgiving. There's a way of ex us expressing our faith uh, and we're going to use the words of the Apostles' Creed drafted many years ago but still useful for those who want to nail their colours to the mast of Jesus. Please join me in saying it. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So that's the end of the second of the three videos, and again please join us in the third, where we sing and we pray to our God. <laughs>